Hello and welcome back to another Monster Monday, a series where I draw a creature from D&D and I talk about its lore and its history and what it's like to fight. Today, with Christmas fast approaching and me being extraordinarily excited about that fact, I thought I would do a little bit of a special episode here. Many may celebrate this holiday just like I do, so I thought it would be a nice change of pace to create Santa as a D&D NPC to talk about the lore and history of Father Christmas, but of course, this is D&D, so we can't create Father Christmas here, we have to create Father Christmas. And as a little gift to my patrons over on Patreon for this festive season, I'm going to give them the stats for this creature after I'm done. I thought in this Monster Monday, we could explore the idea of Father Christmas, create Father Christmas, and translate it into our D&D games. Just a little heads up before we get started though, this is actually going to be my last video on YouTube before 2019, 2019. In a previous video I mentioned that I've got a lot of festive work to do, a lot of holiday work to do, I've got a lot of gifts to make and drawings to do for people. And I really, really love this season so I'm going to do all of that while sipping a lot of eggnog and eating an unnatural amount of turkey. So uh, I'm going to be taking a break after this video until the new year. But don't worry, I have plenty of exciting stuff planned for when we get back. So if you celebrate a holiday at this time of year, I hope you have a fantastic time. But in the meantime, let's get started with today's video. So where's the best place to start to understand the legend of Father Christmas or Santa or whatever you call him? That was actually one of the first things that I realized was maybe a little bit different from place to place. This legend changes depending on what nation you live in. He's most dominantly known as Santa, Santa Claus in the USA. More often than not, he's Father Christmas in the UK, Chris Kringle, or jolly old Saint Nick. But although he goes by many different names, we have the same sort of image in our heads when we think of this guy. He's very robust, sturdy, we'll say, or, well, rotund, very jolly gentleman. The large white beard, white hair, clad from head to toe, in white fur lined red garments. He has a bottomless bag filled with toys, resides in the North Pole, and has a sleigh pulled by flying reindeer that can travel so fast that he can visit every single home on the planet in a single night and never gets a single speeding ticket. Now legend has it, or at least I suppose folklore has it, that Coca-Cola are the company responsible for the majority of us believing that Father Christmas wears entirely red, red and white clothes because that is their sort of corporate color scheme. And as the saying goes, you know, it's not Christmas until you see that one Coca-Cola Center ad. And it's true, Father Christmas has been a massive part of Coca-Cola's advertising campaign every single year. And who knows, that may have helped to unify our collective understanding of what this jolly gentleman might wear. But the reality is his joviality, his spectacles, his fur-lined clothes, and even in wearing the color red, were originally popularized by a wonderful poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, commonly known as Twas the Night Before Christmas, written by either Clark Moore or by Henry Livingston Jr. There's a little bit of a debate about that, but there's certainly no debate that it was first published in 1837. And to go along with that, an illustrator by the name of Thomas Nast, N-A-S-T, published a few paintings, a few pictures here and there in the mid to late 1800s inspired by this poem that feature jolly old Saint Nick as we now imagine him. But just like the story of Krampus, which I covered last week, a lot of historians and other sources online suggest that the modern interpretation of Father Christmas stems from much older influences. Namely, and I was very excited to find this out, that of Odin the All-Father, the father of the gods in the Norse pantheon, a god of war and of wisdom, an older, older gentleman with a wizened face and a long white beard, who despite having only one eye, uses his two ravens, Hungin and Munin, to watch over all of the world's denizens, I suppose determining whether or not anyone's been bad or good. And this gives me somewhere to start and somewhere to be very excited about to create Father Christmas and to gather some influence for this creature in D&D. Because I've mentioned Odin before in one of these Monster Mondays, he features quite prevalently when I talk about frost giants because Norse mythology, Odin, this was all used to create the frost giants in D&D. And indeed, frost giants feature heavily in Norse mythology as well. Odin himself was said to be 
at least part one of these creatures. So I'm going to use a lot of the same influence that I used when I was studying the Frost Giants in D&D in my Monster Monday based on them. So that means Father Christmas is either going to be a Frost Giant or perhaps a half Frost Giant. And examining Norse mythology further, looking at Odin, I can see that there are quite a few more connections between Odin and this Father Christmas character. So Father Christmas lives in the North Pole, the frozen north, the very most northern point. And in Norse mythology, the Frost Giants lived in Jotunheim, an endless frozen fjord. Dimension of Frost. This seems very connected to me. And Odin used to ride around, I suppose technically his grandson, an eight-legged flying horse by the name of Slepnir, who was Loki's son. Loki being the adopted son of Odin. But aside from Allfather, Odin had plenty of other names which also tie him to Father Christmas. He was sometimes known as Langbärder, or Longbeard, for his long white beard, just like Father Christmas, or Jalnir, meaning Yule figure. And Yule itself is a phrase we still use today to symbolize Christmas, the Yule, the Yule period, Yule tidings, and so on. But it's actually an ancient Germanic festival of the Wild Hunt, presided over by none other than Odin, where ghostly spiritual riders would pursue their prey for warning of a calamitous event, perhaps the possibility of death and icy cold that comes with winter. The term Father Christmas actually dates back to the 16th century though, in England however, where the tradition of a man robed in green or red, lined with fur, brought good cheer, good food, and generally excess, not unlike Dionysus, the Greek god of similar activities. This all took place on Father Christmas's feast day, on St. Nicholas's feast, the 6th of December. And if you remember, in the Krampus Monster Monday, we talked about Krampusnacht, also taking place on the 5th, the day before the Feast of St. Nicholas. Well, it turns out that later, this feast, these celebrations, among a host of other ones, were deemed to diminish the importance of the celebration of the birth of Christ in the Christian Church on the 25th of December. And so all of these ideas, all these holidays, were unified into one celebration of Christmas, moved to the 25th of December, as we now celebrate it, and incorporated into our modern ideas of what we do when we celebrate Christmas, if you do. But the other name for Father Christmas, Saint Nicholas, this guy who had a feast on the 6th, was a very real person, a Greek bishop who lived sometime in the 4th century in the Byzantine Empire, which in modern day would be something around the area, the region of Turkey. And he was famous for charitable gift-giving, giving to the poor. And apparently, most notably, he granted a dowry to a Christian man so that his three daughters wouldn't have to become prostitutes in order for their family to survive. And this phrase, dowry, confused me a tiny bit, although it kept coming up whenever I found this, this legend. Because to me, a dowry uh, is a kind of old-fashioned gift that one family would give to the family of the bride in a wedding. Kind of like a gift or compensation, perhaps, upon getting married. So hopefully St. Nicholas isn't famous for marrying three prostitutes or trying to buy three prostitutes, and this festival is instead more charitable. But you know, history is super, super dark and grim and disturbing sometimes, so, so who knows? But either way, this charitable act and his other charitable donations were so noteworthy and so worthy of praise that Nicholas became a saint and he had a feast dedicated to him on the 6th of December, where kids were given gifts in his honour, and likely this is why we now give gifts on Christmas Day. After that research, it was time to make Father Christmas. So creating Father Christmas out of all these legends and myths, obviously my illustration was hugely inspired by Odin, by frost giants in D&D, toyed with the idea of giving him blue skin, just like my frost giant Monster Monday. But let's talk stats. How does this guy operate? So I gave him fur or patchwork armor. So I gave him an armor class of 15. I said he was lawful good because let's make a good guy for a change. I said he had 30, 30 foot speed and his hit points were 12d12 plus 60, taking inspiration from actual frost giants in the game book. Similarly, his stats, I took huge influence from the existing frost giants in there. I gave him 23 strength, so a plus six. I gave him nine dexterity, which makes it a minus one because he's so huge that he's not exactly going to be very nimble, but he makes up for that with 21 constitution, so he has a plus five. He has 12 intelligence. I imagine him more wise and knowledgeable than intelligent per se, not exactly a magic caster because he employs elves or 
something like elves to make all of his toys for him. So he needs to be charismatic and wise because he's a gift giver, not a gift builder. So I gave him 16 wisdom, making it a plus three, and 16 charisma, making that a plus three as well. Survive the freezing cold. I made him resistant to frost damage and his tough giant skin gave him a saving throw, a plus eight in constitution. It's plus seven in wisdom and a plus seven in charisma as well. Being a kind, healing, generous sort who cares for animals, I figured he'd need some skills to reflect that. And I thought about animal handling and I thought about survival. So I thought I'd give him medicine plus seven because that makes him more of a kind of supporting character, something that might be useful to have on your team very briefly for a session or two. Sort of nature survival plus five and perception plus seven. I didn't give him insight for reasons that we'll go into in just a second. I gave him immunity to being charmed and I thought his senses should give him true sight 120 feet because he knows if you've been bad or good that means he's probably going to see through any illusions or lies that you might try to tell him. To that end I gave him a special skill, a special ability called the naughty list which means that Father Christmas always knows if he hears a lie. I also thought that it was important to make a Father Christmas that always knew what someone was writing to him when they asked for gifts and always knew what someone was talking about. I've seen wonderful videos of sign language Santas and things like that that are truly heartwarming and I thought this seems like something that should be incorporated. So I decided to give Father Christmas knowledge of all languages but also telepathy to 120 feet just in case someone was mute. So this bumped his challenge rating up enormously. And in the end, I settled on a challenge rating 10 creature for this, which might mean that his hit points are a tiny bit squishy. I'm not quite sure. I'm sure my patrons will let me know if they use him in their games, but he has some amazing abilities as well. And I said that he was an innate spellcaster using charisma, because he was a jolly old Saint Nick, to cast spells giving you a spell save DC of 15, and he can innately cast the following spells with no material components. Now, obviously, he needs to be able to detect good and evil to see if you've been good or bad. Thought Druid Craft to tie him back to his Odin kind of Norse roots, and non-detection, because aside from the odd crumbs of mince pies left on the fireplace, you never really know that he's been there, perhaps some little snowy footprints here and there. But I thought an important part of Father Christmas is the ability to descend chimney tops in order to give people gifts. And I thought at will, that means that he needs to be able to cast Misty Step so that he could fit through that narrow little pipe to descend someone's chimney. And also mist, it seems kind of like soot and ash from a chimney, so that seems quite fitting. Although that does mean that he can literally teleport whenever he wants to, so that makes him quite scary. I thought three times a day he could cast Conjure Woodland Beings, allowing him to summon eight helper elves. Although I decided that these would not be actual elves, because that's not exactly the tiny helper that we imagine, perhaps maybe gnomes or halflings. It's kind of up to you, but I assume that they would take the stats of goblins that have a lawful good alignment. That does make him quite powerful though, being able to summon eight of anything to fight alongside him. So you may want to turn that into a lair action. It just seemed right to make that a, a spell that he can cast three times a day. So I suppose that's up to your interpretation. Next, I thought he needed reindeer. So I thought he could cast find steed three times a day, summoning an elk as a flying speed of 60 feet. I thought he could cast Haste, Heroism, and Hero's Feast, because that idea of hearth and home seemed pretty important. I also really wanted to make him a good supporting character. So once per day, I said that he could have access to two very, very powerful spells, which may, again, sort of take him outside of the challenge rating 10 creature. I'm not sure, but I thought I would give him Time Stop for reasons that I'll explain in just a second, which may make him absolutely broken. Maybe make that a once per adventure if you're going to use him for more than a, a one-off session. But I also gave him wish, allowing him to grant the wish of a lawful good child only. Just so he doesn't get too ridiculous. In case you choose to kill Father Christmas and want to loot his magic items, I said that he carries around a bag of holding with him at all times, and any items stored within do not count as part of the wielder's carrying capacity if the item inside is intended to be given as a gift to someone else. I also said that the sack can be used to cast the good berry spell once per long rest, and the berries take the form of a glass of mulled wine, just like that in my intro and outro at the moment, a hot cocoa, cookies or mince pies, and other winter treats. I said that Father Christmas's weapons count 
count as magical. And when Father Christmas hits with any weapon, the weapon deals an extra 2d8 frost damage to creatures of an evil alignment, again, because you're on the naughty list. Now, the whole reason for Time Stop is included in an ability that I gave him called Time Dilation Aura. Someone far smarter than me on the internet thankfully had done a calculation to find out how fast someone would have to travel if they wanted to reach every single home on the planet in a single night. And apparently that comes out to 1,800 miles per second. So I said that Father Christmas innately produces a time-altering aura around him, perhaps with a kind of snowy finish swirling around him, or perhaps a mist. I said that he and all creatures, good or bad, that start their turn within 120 feet of Father Christmas count as affected by this aura, and suggested that perhaps using the time stop spell as reference, that means that everybody within this aura counts as though time has stopped to those on the outside or is moving incredibly slowly just so that he could move so quickly in a single night. That means your whole adventure could take place in the blink of an eye as long as you have Father Christmas on your side. In terms of actions, I thought we're dealing with someone inspired by a Norse god here, so we need some pretty fun weapons. I gave Father Christmas a multi-attack, allowing him to make two attacks per round with a candy cane warhammer. It's a plus 10 to hit and deals 46 plus 6 bludgeoning damage. But again, if you've been naughty, if you have an evil alignment, that's going to do a lot more. I also imagine that he could pull a small toy longbow out of his bag for a ranged attack, despite his dexterity not being quite as good. I thought that would do 2d6 plus 3 piercing damage. As for legendary actions, I thought this would be quite fun. I gave him coal, which costs three legendary actions, gifts, which costs one, toys, which costs one, and a move called sack, which costs two of his three legendary actions per round, per turn. I thought coal could be giving the gift of coal, punishing an evil person. So one creature of an evil alignment, or a creature that's antagonized, attacked Father Christmas last turn, or has maybe told a lie within the last minute, can be affected by this ability. And it functions very similar to a Medusa's petrifying gaze, allowing Father Christmas to possibly turn someone into coal if they fail a series of constitution saving throws. For gifts, I said that Father Christmas drops D6 magic weapons that are all plus two within five feet of him. that are all made out of enormous pieces of candy or of toys. They're really useful in combat, but they crack if they critically hit and dissolve being made of candy after 24 hours. So they're not useful for sale. Thought with a sack full of toys on him at all times, I thought he could pull some of these out to be useful. I thought that he could roll a D3 and summon a wind-up nutcracker or a toy soldier, which counts as animated armor in the monster manual. On a two, he could summon a flying sword, be a toy sword, or a patchwork quilt to keep someone warm, which counts as a rug of smothering on a three. And finally, why have a bag of holding that can fit absolutely anything if you can't use it as a weapon, I say? So for two legendary actions, I thought if you're within five feet of Father Christmas, he could shroud you in his bottomless bag of holding, which you get a chance to dodge out of the way of with a dexterity saving throw. But on a failure, you are bound to the bag. You count as if swallowed by some sort of creature. You have total cover from the outside. You count as blinded and restrained inside because there's so many toys in there. And with Father Christmas swinging this sack around his head as he fights in combat outside, I said that you could repeat your saving throw to escape every turn. But if you fail, you take 46 bludgeoning damage from a tidal wave of crushing toys that are inside the bag with you. But yeah, I had huge, huge fun making this video, so I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, please make sure to leave a little thumbs up, a little like down below. Maybe favorite this video if you want to come back and use Father Christmas later on, or share it with the rest of your group if you're inspired to have a Christmas-themed one-off or a campaign. Everything that you can do like that really, really helps this channel to grow. So thank you very much. If you like this drawing in particular, or you like the idea of getting some homebrew from me like this every month, then please head over to my Patreon page where backers receive prints of all the drawings that I do for Monster Mondays and little pieces of homebrew just like this. And like I said, this is my final video until January, because I'm going to go and enjoy this festive period. And I hope you do too, whether or not you celebrate a holiday. But if you do, happy holidays, whatever kind you celebrate. Merry Christmas from me. And as always, happy monster hunting.
most dominantly known. He's most dominantly known as Santa. He's most. <laughs> the roadway is going outside, and this is really frustrating. Originally popularised by a wonderful poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, commonly known as... Commonly known as... He was... He was sometimes known... Oh my god, Myrtle. Really, Myrtle? Are you going to do this now? You sound like there's a goblin in the studio. Studio. Living room. Myrtle, hey. Mertz, Mertz, can you not do that until after I finish recording? Okay, just five minutes. Five minutes of uninterrupted time here, and then you can do whatever you like, okay? not long left. <sighs> please, 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 please be quiet for just a second, okay? The term Father Christmas actually dates back to the 16th century though, in England, however. I have one more bit to do, but I really, really need you to stop making little snuffly noises as cute as they are just any given time other than this. Okay. Right, okay. Do this quickly. In case you choose to kill Father Christmas and want to loot his magic items, I said that he f carries around. I said that he. I said that he carries around a bag of holding. Oh my god. I said that he carries around a bag of holding with him at all times. If you liked this video in particular. No. If you like this drawing in particular.